hi there. I'm here today with my jungle carpet python, which is one of my favorite snakes. But honestly, a snake that is not known for being all that nice. And I actually, uh, here with me today, I've brought a few snakes that are species that are not known for being all that nice, including one that is venomous and that has bitten me before. So you might want to stay tuned for this whole video. It would be especially funny if I got bitten again because the topic of this video is about how to avoid being bitten by snakes because I hate being bitten by snakes. I don't enjoy it at all. And it's not the pain. That doesn't bother me. Like I, I all hold monitors and, and tegus and stuff that I know are going to cut me up. It's just, I don't know. I don't like being bitten by crickets or crested geckos or snakes or anything. It's just something about being bitten. I don't, I don't like, and I try to avoid it. And I've found for most of my life that avoiding being bitten by snakes isn't really all that hard. I've only, I've only been bitten three times all three of those times by uh, lazy biters. I've never been bitten by a snake that uh, was was acting defensive and struck at me. It's always been situations where they just kind of put their face up to me and go, nah. Uh, one of those times, luckily enough, was on camera. And, and so you've maybe seen that video before when I was bitten by my false water cobra right after he came. And, and that was kind of an example of what's happened to me. I, I was bitten one time uh, while I was growing up uh, by a, a rat snake and I watched that one happen. The, the two that have happened in the last 15 years or so though have been situations where I was presenting the snake, like right now, either to a camera, that was one of the times, as you saw. Uh, the other time was in a, in a college classroom, I was presenting the, the snake to the class and, and the snake bit me. And, and in, in these Two most recent uh, occurrences, they've been times where I wasn't able to watch the snake because I actually find it very easy to interpret the body language of snakes and know when it's not a smart time to grab a snake. As a result, like I said, I, you know, I, I hold snakes every day uh, and I hold some snakes like this one that are species that are known for being a little bit bitey and I almost never get bitten. And, and a lot of people have asked me, you know, what, what is it you look for? How do you know? Cause, cause I mean, it is, it's something I can, I can see coming. I've only been bitten by snakes three times, but I've watched a heck of a lot of people be bitten by snakes. Uh, is even in situations where I knew they were going to be bitten and I told them you're going to be bitten. Uh, a lot of times someone will hand me their grumpy snake. So they've got a snake. I can tell it's grumpy. And so I'm holding it, but I kind of know how to hold it. So it won't, it won't be threatened by me. And the owner of the snake will come over and get bitten by their snake while I'm holding it. So uh, apparently, and you know, I, I never, I never really thought about it much, but I, you know, I, I think I do have a bit of a knack for it. And, and so, so many people have been asking me, you know, what, what do you look for? How do you know that I've really had to sit down and think, what, what is it? How do I notice? And uh, here's what I've got. Even if you're not interested in how to avoid a snake bite, I mean, you're going to want to stick around just because we're going to have a lot of really rad snakes. Some of them haven't covered yet in a full video, like like this one. This is my blood python, and I love this guy. He's so cool, but blood pythons are definitely one of those snakes that have kind of a reputation for being a little bit grumpy. So, back to the question at hand. What do I look for to avoid a snake bite? And this is actually a snake that uh, it took a bit of a shot at me when I first went to get him. The first night I, I well, I, I, before I even picked him up, I was taking him in as a bit of a rescue. It was a rehoming. I'd been told that he was nice for a blood python. One of the first things he did, though, was he snapped at me. And, and fortunately, I, I could see it coming, and, and uh, I wasn't within the strike zone when that happened. Wouldn't have been a big deal because he was little then, but I don't really want to be bitten by him now. So I'll, I'll tell you, the first thing that I look for, and this is actually something that I look for a lot with this guy, is I look for a snake that's watching me. 
um, you know, you can see most of the time, like this snake right here, he does not seem particularly interested in my actions. He's not focused on me, he's not focused on my hands, he's not focused on my face. He's just sort of exploring around. And um, that generally tends to indicate a snake that's not feeling very defensive. However, when a snake is feeling defensive, it's going to be very, very focused on you. It'll be watching you and when you move, it's gonna follow. And my way of dealing with a snake that's doing that is to not try to grab it. That has served me very well. I've never been bitten by a snake that was acting defensively like that. When they're staring at you like that, there's only two things that are probably going on. One of them is that they think they're being fed and, and you're getting a food response and you don't wanna be on the receiving end of a food response. And the second thing is that they think they're being hunted and that you're danger and so then you're getting a, a defensive response and I don't wanna be on the receiving end of a defensive response either. The next thing that I look for is a snake that is positioned to strike. And, and you'll see this actually quite a bit when I, when I get the boa out because boas kind of sit in this position a lot of the time, which can make them a little bit harder to read. But, but I'll, generally if a snake is kind of coiled back, especially if it's watching you, that is a snake that is feeling defensive and like it needs to be prepared to defend itself. You know, when you're a noodle with a head, the world is a scary place. I'll mention this a few times, I'm sure, during this video. And, and so they have to be ready to defend themselves if they think they're gonna be killed. And that works for a lot of snakes. It's actually one of the things that's a little bit harder about snakes like sand boas and blood pythons like this because they're a little bit more ambush predators. And so they need to be able to strike in weird directions and so they can strike sideways and back over their body and stuff. Most snakes won't do that though. And so for most snakes, if you see them kind of in a, in a S kind of cocked back position, it doesn't mean that they're gonna strike at you for sure, but it's an indicator that you might wanna start paying attention to the other things going on with that snake. Another really clear indicator of snake body language that indicates that they're feeling threatened. And this is, this is definitely more of a threat response than a food response, is they'll start bringing their tongue out very, very slowly. And for a long time, and a lot of times they bring it way up over their head and do these long, slow tongue flicks in between bringing it out. When a snake is doing that, it is definitely feeling threatened and it's probably not a good idea to try to grab it. Something else that you can look for, especially with colubrid snakes, like gopher snakes are just, they're great at this, garter snakes are great at this, is they will flatten their head out. Uh, you know, in some instances, this may be just to make them look larger, but it also might be uh, a, a, sort, a form of mimicry to look more like vipers. And so they, they may be mimicking vipers by flattening that head. When they flatten their head out like that, almost certainly a snake that's feeling defensive. And something that I look for a lot with the blood python, since it doesn't do that sort of cocked position and it doesn't stare at you in the same way because they can strike from such strange positions, but when they do this sort of irregular rapid breathing where they'll breathe real fast and then they kind of stop breathing for a little bit and then they go that is usually a snake that is feeling threatened and so they're holding almost perfectly still for as long as they can, and then they sort of hyperventilate for just a second, and then they hold still again. That is a snake that is feeling defensive. And again, you know, these snakes, they're not gonna try to eat you, right? You're, you're, not, you're not a prey at them. I mean, they, they might if you come in there and they, they think they're being fed and they see a moving hand quickly. But you know, if you're holding one or something like that, they're not thinking they're being fed, they're just afraid that you're gonna kill them. And so when you can tell that a snake is feeling that way, don't try to grab it. This is my boa ruby. Well, one of my boas, but this is, this is ruby. And I love her. She's actually been totally great for me. Uh, though every one of her siblings that I've been around, I have seen strike at the person that owned them while I've been in their presence, which wasn't for very long. There's that kind of S position I was telling you about. Now she is not staring at me, she's not threatened. It's just boas tend to be in that position a lot. But if you see a snake that's not a boa in that position, uh, you might wanna be a little bit more wary, probably don't reach at it. And even with boas, when I'm around groups of people and I'm worried that a boa might strike at them, cause they can be a little bit harder to read, a lot of times I'll come and I'll just put my hand up around 
you know, the front part of their body and just make shorten their strike range and ensure that if they do strike, they're gonna strike at me. But the reason I wanted to have the boa out right now is because I wanted to talk about some of the audible cues that snakes will give you. Uh, one of them that's pretty common, and I think most people can interpret it fairly easily, is hissing. Right, a, a snake that's feeling defensive, a lot of times they will hiss, sometimes fairly loudly, as a way of trying to warn you that you should leave them alone. Boas, this is why I get a boa out, are the only snakes I've ever seen growl. But they will genuinely growl, and they, they'll also hiss with their mouth wide open. Boas are phenomenal at letting you know that they're feeling nervous about what you're doing. Another audible cue that you'll get a lot is tail rattling. And, and this is a really interesting behavior to me. It's something you see a lot from uh, a lot of colubrid snakes, especially like Pituophis, which are the, uh, the gophers and pines and bull snakes. They're classics at it, but also a lot of rat snakes, you know, corn snakes will do this. You know, some people will say that they're mimicking rattlesnakes and they very well may be, but also you get a lot of snakes from Asia and, and you know, Africa and just the old world that do this same behavior even though there are no rattlesnakes in the old world. And so it's very likely that rattling is just a defensive behavior because it makes a scary noise and rattlesnakes, because they have the rattle, just happen to be the very best at it of any of the snakes. But that's definitely something to watch for and if they're doing that and you don't want to be bitten, don't grab them. One last tip is just to know your snake. I feel much more comfortable about my ability to read my snakes or snakes that I've interacted with previously. You know, when, when somebody sets a new snake in my hands, I treat it with a great deal of care because I don't know, you know, what the personality is like of that specific snake. You know, th this snake here, I, I know her well and I feel like I can trust her, but I am a little bit careful around her just because I've seen that her siblings, some of them, were so much bitier than she is. And so I'm careful when I'm around other people that might get bitten. I try to just make sure that if she decides to lash out for the first time ever, uh, that if anybody's gonna get bitten, it will be me. But just knowing the personality of your snake and what it does when it's feeling threatened can be extremely beneficial. Speaking of knowing your snakes, this is Sinatra and he is one of the nicest snakes in the world. I could probably grab him out of his enclosure blindfolded and not have anything to worry about because he is so laid back. But I do want to talk to you about getting snakes out of their enclosures because this is one of the times where there are the most reasons to get bitten. One of them is that you might have a defensive snake that's feeling threatened. And that, that can be an issue in the enclosure or outside of the enclosure. But one of the things inside of the enclosure is they might think they're being fed. As always, I'm looking for a snake that's looking at me and following me. That could easily be a snake that thinks it's being fed, you know, even if it's not a snake that's feeling defensive. So don't reach right at a snake that's doing that. If I have a snake that is doing that and I, I need to get it out, what I will do is I will try to make some sort of contact with its body as far away from the head as possible. And, and a lot of times, because snakes are long, you know, you'll be able to reach part of the back of its body and be a long way away from the head and just kind of send a message to the snake that you're not being fed, I'm here to pick you up. And a lot of times the snakes will change right out of I'm being fed mode and they're good to go. Uh, at times a snake may be all coiled up on itself where there is no place far away from the head. In that case, I usually try to touch them with something else like a snake hook or even a pen or just really any object I can it, just to indicate to them that I'm here to pick you up, I'm not here to feed you. And, and usually that works. And, and ideally, especially if they're coiled up on themselves, I try to get the snake to start moving on its own. Once it's moving off on its own, even in the wild, you can generally just grab a snake and pick it up once it's decided to run instead of decided to stand its ground. One really important thing to keep in mind when handling a snake is never to restrain them. If you want to avoid being bitten, don't grab onto the snake. That's something that only predators are going to do to them. They think they're being killed. And so what you want to do is let the snake just sit on you and you treadmill it, which is just that you kind of stay under its body. And actually, I think I'm going to switch to a snake that's a little bit better for treadmilling so you can get the idea. All right, so this is Shelby. 
And Shelby is my male false water cobra, who, the last time I tried to handle him without gloves, bit me. Unfortunately, he's venomous. But, since that time, I have not handled him except with gloves. So today, for the first time since I unboxed him and, and got tagged, I'm going to try handling him barehanded. Now, a lot of people have told me what an idiot I was for handling uh, this venomous snake at all, or especially with bare hands. And a lot of people seem to think I was going to die after being envenomated. I, I should tell you, he's a false water cobra. They're called false water cobras because they look a lot like an old world snake called a banded water cobra. I think these are actually even cooler looking than the true cobra, the banded water cobra. But uh, they are not true cobras themselves. These guys are from South America and they are rear fanged venomous. There's a little bit of dispute about how intense that venom is, but from my personal experience and the experience of other people I know that keep them, it's not really a big deal. I got some itching and that was about it. Um, but I wanted to show you guys a little bit of treadmilling and I'm gonna be doing some extra careful treadmilling, which is just perfect for today. Uh, which is just that I'm trying to support his body. I'm trying to, I'm not restraining him. I'm letting him move. These guys, part of their Cobra look is not only the banding and their basic head shape, but also they have a hood that they can flare up, which is really nice if you know that your snake happens to be a false water cobra and it has a hood, then in that case, you'll know that that's an indicator that it's feeling threatened and he's not even doing that. Ooh, boy. But he is moving on me quite a bit and he didn't hood up the last time he bit me. He just decided to munch me a little. So you see, I'm being extra careful with him and I, I wouldn't be this nervous around most snakes, but like I said, the last time I did this, he bit me, so I'm being a little bit extra careful with him. But he's actually being pretty lovely, but when you're treadmilling, you just kind of let them keep sliding through your hands. And that's all you have to do. Oh, I love this guy. He's gotten so beautiful. He's got his adult coloration in now. And I'm excited for him just to get bigger and bigger. I, I should mention though that, you know, even, well, a, a lot of my tips here have been, if it's doing this, don't grab it, you know, and there are things that you can do to increase the probability that it'll stop doing the things that indicate that it's a defensive snake or a snake that thinks it's getting fed. But that's not always the case. And sometimes you need to leave them alone. And I find that in those situations, the best solution is just to have several snakes. So you go hold a different one. Then your life is still complete. Isn't that good advice? Well, one thing that I, I wouldn't recommend is feeding your snake in a different container. That's the way that some people deal with a snake that is uh, potentially going to think it's being fed when it's in its tub. There isn't really any good indicators that they become less likely to think they're being fed in their tub. And there is good evidence to suggest that they're more likely to not feed or to regurgitate after feeding when they're being moved a lot before and after feeding. So I would recommend just feed them in their enclosure and uh, just be paying attention to their body language when you go to get them out. It won't change anything to feed them elsewhere. The truth is, if you want to handle snakes without getting bitten, one of the best things that you can do is pick species that aren't very bitey and, and even within a species, pick individuals. Like I was saying, you know, my, my particular boa is an individual that is not bitey. But a lot of her siblings were, and so it can come right down to just the very individual that you choose. If you choose a, a, a pretty laid back individual that's not easily threatened by people, then you're likely to have a very good experience. And if you pick a really grumpy snake, you can probably expect to get bitten from time to time. Another piece of advice I would have is don't do the things that snakes hate. For example, snakes don't like to get poked in the face, so I try to avoid booping them on the snoot. They hate that. Another thing that snakes don't like is to be um, 
circled and threatened and, and come at from above as though you were a predator. I mentioned earlier that there was one time that Ruby struck at me and what was happening was I had her on the ground and I was taking pictures of her and I was just circling around her, circling around her, circling around her and right before she got defensive, I thought, what the heck am I doing? I'm acting just like a predator. And then immediately she started looking right at me and following me and she took one strike in my direction. And uh, I managed to give her kind of a tap to remind her that, hey, it's just me. And then I was able to pick her up and put her away and everything was fine. But when you do the things that snakes hate, you greatly increase the probability that you'll be bitten by that snake. I want to take just a moment to talk about Patreon because Patreon's been an amazing thing. Patreon actually allowed me to get this jungle carpet python so I could give you a really good review on carpet pythons. And when he got sick, because he, he came down with a respiratory infection almost right after I got him while he was still in early quarantine. I mean, we, you know, we would have taken care of him no matter what, but Patreon was able to help us with our veterinary bills, which weren't excessively high, but it was really awesome to have you guys there. Uh, You've done so much for our channel and, and the animals that, that we use here at Clint's Reptiles. And and I, hopefully uh, you've appreciated a lot of the great perks that come to our patrons at Patreon. Like our awesome, uh, well, our early videos, our extra videos, the Patreon extras, which cover so many things. I'm sure there's a ton from filming today that will be in there uh, from our super secret awesome podcast that's super exclusive. Anyway... Thank you guys, and I hope you're enjoying it. If you're not currently a patron at Patreon, come on over and check it out. Another tip I've found to be very, very helpful, especially when you're holding a snake that is acting a little bit defensive, because sometimes, you know, your friend will just plop a snake in your hands and it's doing all the defensive things, and it's hissing, and it's all cocked back, and it's following you, and you know, if you make any sudden movements, it's gonna bite you. So don't make sudden movements, right? And one thing I've learned, you know, while treadmilling snakes, especially if they're a little bit defensive acting, is that I never bring my off hand to the snake. I always bring the snake to my off hand. And I don't know why it makes such a difference to them, but it does. And so that has been a really great thing I've discovered in the last few years is that I can almost always bring the snake to my hand and they're not concerned about my hand. But if I start reaching at the snake with my hand, they can often be very concerned about that. And overall, you know, you just want to be gentle and calm with the snake. You want to think about, you know, if a giant were holding you, how would you want the giant to act? And that is pretty much the way that a snake wants you to act. If you're very jerky and nervous and quick with your movements, if you're firm and restraining and hurting them, then they're going to be afraid. They're going to think that their lives are in danger and they're going to defend themselves in the only way you can when you're a noodle with a head. Snakes do not want to bite you. You know, uh, you've got all these snakes with all these defensive postures. You got cobras with big hoods. You got rattlesnakes with rattles. You got snakes everywhere hissing and rattling and acting like, you know, uh, big scary noodles, right? And it's all because they don't want to have to bite you. They just want to be not hurt, right? They don't want you to hurt them. And, and in the situation where they, they misconstrue you for a feeder, you know, that that's mistaken identity. Just make sure that you make it clear to the snake who you are and that you're not food. The truth is, though, that bites will happen. I mean, if you interact with snakes enough, at some point you're going to be bitten. You know, and when it happens, it's not the snake's fault. The snake probably gave you every opportunity to not be bitten and you just weren't paying enough attention. So don't take it out on the snake, just take it as an opportunity to learn. I definitely learned something not long ago when I handled my false water cobra for the first time. And uh, I've learned a lot about always watching the snakes even when I'm presenting them. You've probably noticed today during this video, I'm watching the snakes a lot more than I, I normally do during these videos. And it's because I brought snakes that are a little bit harder to handle just to show you that, you know, you can do it in a way that is totally positive for you and the snake. And usually that's just a great situation. And aren't tree snakes rad? <laughs> can you imagine being able to do that? That's amazing. Like I said, bites will happen. But if I've learned anything from Edna Mode, 
It's that luck favors the prepared. Thank you for being here with me and some of my favorite snakes. Uh, I hope that this has been, been useful. If you've got any tips about how to read snakes or how to, how to avoid being bitten by snakes other than avoiding snakes entirely, I'd love to hear them. Please comment about these things. Like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. Jason, do you have your pen? Did it work? <laughs> like that is so much body. It is yeah. So long. That's what I tell myself every day when I look in the mirror. That's so much body, girl. <laughs> Get a handle on it. Get it together. Tree snakes do crazy things. Look at that. Oh my that is God. so that cool. That is some reach. That is so cool. Yeah, you crazy. are such. I'm so glad as to. I was gonna make sure it stayed too. Yeah, go for it. Why are you so cool? Oh, oh you're awesome. It looks like you're holding a sword. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll see this a lot from like... <laughs> that rumbling!